Developers are people who work on applications and software, work for big companies, do all kinds of things. And we were talking about this before that lots of types of developers or people who write code in whether they self-identify that way or not, you know, might be online sharing code with other people and doing those sorts of things. But that's not the only way that developers either work or exist kind of out there, not to be too existential about it, but yep. um, the idea that there's also a lot of developers that either work for what we would call at Cisco a partner, ecosystem mm -hmm. partner or however. And I, I really wanted to talk to you a bit today because so many people that attend the DevNet Zone and attend Cisco Live or are around this industry, yeah. um, they develop things yeah. in their own way, either grassroots, working for a company, but they're one part of the one part of this big kind of puzzle. The other part is the partnerships, and Cisco is a partner-driven company. Mm -hmm. So I really like to talk to you about what is the idea of a development partner or a developer partner yeah. from your perspective. Yeah, so it's actually a really great question. Um, so when people think of developers, they typically think of like communities where people are sharing code, where there's collaboration between other developers. Hey, I'm trying to do this thing. And someone goes, oh, I posted this, this worked for me. Um, and that and that's, collaboration's incredibly important. Um, but what we're seeing, at least at, on the uh, Cisco Meraki side, is on the back end uh, of the interface of the dashboard, we're seeing technology partners who actually have turnkey applications that they've built. Uh, they built them with a purpose, with a problem that they solve in mind, and, and who they solve them for, and they're tapping into that back and leveraging the APIs and extracting the data they need for those applications to work. Uh, so they're actual businesses that manage the lifecycle management of the entire application uh, versus sharing code, right? So they're, they're leveraging the API, they're leveraging the data, but instead of, um, instead of teaching people codes and different things to extract that data, they're actually saying, hey, we have an app, it uses data, it's ready to go, uh, so that's the difference really I see between a tech partner and uh, what you traditionally hear as a developer. You know, I really love that. First off, you actually said something, you said the word that I was looking for, you said community, so I think we're good here. <laughs> I'm a community person, so I love hearing that. Yeah. Um, but something interesting about how you described all that is, mm -hmm. So often I have a conversation with folks who are here in the DevNet zone or just offline when I'm talking to them in hybrid events yeah. or uh, over social media. And so often, um, so often what we end up hearing is people are like, I'm a network engineer, I work with infrastructure, mm -hmm. things of that nature. But you hear from others that it's a struggle. Like how, how would an app developer or a software developer work with Cisco technology? Because yeah. it's hardware, right? And I think at least how I'm hearing what you're describing is a really good example of how that is not true. It's not binary. It's yeah. not either this or this. Yes. It's this good mix because you have people who are actively working on applications. They're mm -hmm. software developers building apps. Yep. Their data primarily, or the, 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 thing, the solutions that they're building for, that to solve for, yeah. are related to infrastructure people have, but it's not that simple. It's not just that. Um, how do you see that playing out for them? Yeah, it's funny. So with the, so with the platform, um, in order to properly maximize uh, the Meraki platform, for example, um, I think you need to be taking a holistic approach. You should be leveraging the APIs, um, leveraging developer code, what's out there, sharing in the communities that we traditionally know, um, but then also turning to these technology partners and saying, hey, I can't do everything myself. I don't wanna, I don't wanna figure out how to do it. I want someone who's figured it out and has unique expertise, whether that be industry expertise or technical expertise. I think it's all about building and using uh, API yourself and getting your hands dirty a little bit, but then also saying, what do I not want to do or what do we not have the bandwidth to do? And turn to tech partners to say, hey, we can do this. There's no shame in saying, we, we know how to do this, but we don't have the bandwidth to do it. And so really leveraging what we call like the, the build versus buy, right? What, what do you want to build and do and interact with the API yourself? Uh, but then also, what, what tech partners do you want to invest in in the applications that they already have that are ready to rock and roll that you can implement today? Both strategies leveraging the API. It, it's, so, it's so, so true. There's so many nuances in there, but it's so true that I, I think, and I, I, when I was a network engineer most of my career, you fall into this pitfall all the time. Where, what, yeah, I, can, I can build this, I can just do it, yeah. I can just do it. Yeah. But then when you sit back and think about it, you realize, oh shoot, it's been two years, I've been saying I can just do it. And <laughs> we, we do that all the time. <laughs> you don't magically yeah. one day just have time to do these mm -hmm. things, especially when you're a small team like they all are. So feeling like it's okay to, to yourself to say, yeah. yeah, budget notwithstanding, but feeling like it's okay to actually say to yourself that like, no, I, you know what, this is what we need to go. We yep. need to position to our leadership or whoever is making the, you know, the, the actual buying decision like, mm -hmm. hey, listen, we could do this, yes. but if we really want X outcome, we're, it's just not feasible for us to spend the time here. Let's, this is a thing we need to buy from a partner or uh, engage with them to develop that thing because tools are great. Tools are fantastic, 
until you have to manage them and yep. set them up and configure yep. them. And Support if you, them. Yes, mm -hmm. and it, that's I think that's where these partnerships really come into play. Yeah, I mean, let's get back to the basics. What is a partner? They're an extension of your team. Uh, and demand the demand on IT teams is only growing and growing and growing. So when are you going to decide what you want to do and prioritize yourself? And then who are you going to reach out to as a comp complementary or an extension of your team? Because that's what these partners are. They truly are partners that become extensions of your team. They're not some like consultant or outside entity so much. They're really kind of come in and be a member of your team. Uh, and you can really leverage their expertise and their, their, in their technical expertise, their industry expertise, and kind of embrace them as a part of your team versus like an outside business for hire. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's that's such a critical thing for so many people that are here. I mean, the DevNet zone that we're sitting in right now yeah. is built on the premise of teaching people and enabling community members to be able to do these things themselves. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more, it's, it's more um, nuanced even than that, which is, yes, we might teach you how to do it yourself, but what we're really hoping is that you can kind of get out of the box and think, what problems do I need to solve? What can I solve? Are there tools for it? I now know how to go look for those tools. Yep. But what we're really hoping for is that you can now make the decision for yourself. Do I have the skills to build this? Mm -hmm. And the time and the energy, I know what to do now. I didn't know it before. Mm -hmm. And where do I say, that's going to be fun for me, yeah. but there's no way that I can do it effectively. So that's where these partners come into play. So I can spend my time on the things that I can do really, really well. Yep. And then I partner with others to augment where I can't spend time. Because otherwise, you're just going to, I don't want to say fail, but yep. you're just not going to be as successful if you don't have partners to help you out. Real business transformation is going to depend on businesses' ability to reduce uh, the time it takes to do these things, but also maximize all their, the, the energy, the investment, the budget that they have, right? So um, if, they, if you really want to transform your business, it's all about figuring out what you can do very well, and then knowing what you can do, and maybe swallowing your ego a little bit and saying, I'm going to go reach out to a tech partner to be an extended member of the team. So um, I think it's a positive thing. I really, you know, as we wrap up, I think that's the part, what you just hit on is of all the all the outcomes you were describing, that is probably the most um, impactful one that Meraki has done really well for a long time, which is whether it's the dashboard API, the various other API endpoints that exist, whether it's the actual dashboard itself, yep. what, whatever you're planning to do as a customer or a consumer of the products, it's always evolving in ways and at the pace when Meraki can make something easier and real simple, yep. but it not just let's add more features for the sake of features yes. as fast as we can. It's like, yes. can we make add value? Can we make that simple? Can we make the interface continue to operate smoothly for you? Or, and the interface could be the actual graphical interface, or it could yep. be the developer experience, the yeah. docs or whatever. Can we make that better and, and just as simple? If not, maybe we, deep, we prioritize that another time when we can actually do that. Mm -hmm. And I think your whole description of how partnerships work in that works really because there's plenty of times you're like, I could do it, with all the tools in Rocky Dashboard and the other APIs yep. have, yep. but it doesn't make sense for me to do that when a partner may have already done that really well and figured out that. It's like, maybe it doesn't. Maybe the partner is the right way to go in this case. Totally, the customers that are thriving on the Meraki platform are leveraging multitude of technology partners and playing around the APIs themselves and developing their own tools and applications as well. So the best of both worlds is really taking that balance of what you want to do and who you want to hire, right? So. I don't think I can say it better myself. Yep. Thank you so much, Alicia. I really I, appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff.